idea of really uh, the overall importance of what's happening this morning? Surely, John. Uh, the dreams of the space pioneers who came up, who... Uh, one thing I must mention, John mentioned the fact that you're moving on to other things. I should mention the fact that General Abramson's next assignment will be a rather esoteric one at this writing. He's going into what's called Star Wars technology. We wish... ...of a football field away from the uh, Solar Max Observatory, the... Seeing George Nelson is already in the man maneuvering unit. He's floating in the payload bay, and he had that trunnion pin attach point in the front of him, ready to go out to Solar Max to attach that to the Solar Max. Now, he's going to cover this uh, almost the length of a football field, uh, going quite slowly. It's, uh, what, 200 feet. How long is that going to take him? Well, it'll take him about 10 minutes. His maximum speed he'll achieve is probably about a half a mile an hour. Very, very, very slow pace, about a half mile per hour. Mm -hmm. And there to the uh, left of our screen, we see the, uh, there in the center, the, the solar max. That's right. Solar max is just slowly revolving at the uh, degree per second, or about one revolution in every six minutes. Now, George, is the trick. George is going to... And dock his body to the solar that, max. Notice it? that pin right on... That's another shot of George right there. You notice that, that device sticking way out in his front, now, like coming out of his belly button. That's the device that will attach to the trunnion pin on the satellite and dock him, hard dock, to that satellite. And he is the only astronaut that will physically leave the space shuttle this morning, right? That's correct. Uh, James Van Hoften is in the payload bay, Ox, as, we, as his nickname is, and he is attached to the payload bay. When uh, Pinky gets out there, George Nelson, his nickname is Pinky, he will try so far out and start the repair of the satellite. We've been talking about Pinky and Ox a little bit this morning. Uh, Pinky being, of course, uh, George Nelson. How did he get that name, Pinky? I asked him the other day, and he said he had two different stories, so he wasn't going to tell either one of them. He was apparently named Pinky when he was born. He I heard one version of that, that his father just started calling him Pinky, and the poor guy was labeled with that the rest that's, of his life. That's exactly right. <laughs> and Ox, of course, uh, Van Hoften, he's, what, 200 pounds plus yeah, or something? Six foot five or so, and he's a big man. And that's, he got the name Ox from his Navy squadron when he was in Vietnam. It's just one of the big guys flying. By, uh, of course, our standards of National Football League players, he's not all that big, but by uh, Gobi, actually, uh, also uh, the pilot on this mission, own a uh, Starduster aircraft, a, a biplane, an acrobatic biplane. And we work on it and do a lot of work on it together. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, I know all these uh, people very well, as we know all the astronauts in the office very well. Bob, where's this camera mounted, the one that we're seeing? This is still in the cargo bay, and that's still... With the manipulator system. That's the big arm that that's will the actually arm. grab the sitting out there. That's right, and it's the elbow camera. Notice that uh, Pinky is starting to translate. He's testing out the system here, and he'll be moving out off towards uh, Solar Max here pretty quick. He's rotating around, so he'll get a line of sight looking directly at Solar Max, and then he'll just thrust towards Solar Max here shortly. And those little, uh, what, thrusters on his jetpack uh, will, that's what will power, power that's right. them. They're, only, the they're very small. They only uh, produce about 1.7 pounds of thrust per each little thruster. But it doesn't take much to get them moving in the vacuum of space to just get them, propel them over towards solar max. Now, to get this in perspective, uh, both the, or rather Nelson, who's out there in space, uh, George Nelson, they're all traveling at 17,400 miles an hour? That's right. Approximately that. Uh, we in the space business go to 25,560 feet per second, but 17,000 miles per hour is a good number. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're all in formation. Uh, the, it turns out as, if you were to look up, you'd see the Challenger ahead of Solar Max, and now Pinky will be then flying over towards Solar Max, going away from Challenger very shortly. Roy Neal, uh, Mission Control in Houston. How do these uh, pictures look to you folks down there? By the way, John, you may notice some of those pictures are black and white and have numbers across the bottom. They are indeed a black and white camera, primarily being used at the moment to show a solar max. And the numbers across the bottom are used for future tape identification. Here he goes, look at him, lifting off. Uh, you may notice the stripes, by the way, on Pinky. I'm sure Bob Obermeyer can tell you about those stripes around the legs for identification. And notice his landing lights as they light during takeoff. That's, again, for identification, for easy spotting of the astronauts as he flies. Let's Are we seeing the Earth? I'm trying to get a better image. It looks to me like that is the Earth. Yes, we're just coming up on sunrise right now. That is sunrise in space. Bob Overmeyer, where are they now positioned? Uh, they're, they're halfway between Hawaii and the west coast of the United States on their orbit. Uh, probably be coming up on the west coast here very shortly. Looking good, thank you. So we're going to have, uh, what, uh, daylight all the way across uh, the United right. States? That's right. That's right. They're coming in at daylight, and the whole plan is for Pinky to get over to Solar Max and get docked to it in the daylight, and hopefully to grapple Solar Max in the daylight. And again, it's going to take uh, Pinky Nelson about 10 minutes to traverse 
this period over about three quarters of the football field over to the solar max and for the for the docking there that's a rather delicate operation isn't it the, the actual docking that's right he Charles Crawford along with astronaut uh, Sherwood Spring and we continue our extended coverage of America's 11th space shuttle flight just moments ago uh, Dr. George Nelson left the cargo bay of the shuttlecraft and that is on his way to make a rendezvous with solar max that's that 5500 pound crippled a satellite that the uh, astronauts hope to bring aboard the, the shuttle flight and to repair and then to return it to space. If they're successful in doing that, they could save the country as much as $200 million. Woody pick it up for us and describe the sequence of events now as uh, Pinky Nelson approaches that crippled satellite. Well, as you mentioned, George has just left the payload bay. He's translating right out the uh, x-axis, or the z-axis, rather, of the orbiter to the solar max. He'll be traveling yeah. at about three feet per second. He'll rendezvous with it, and the choreograph, the timeline, allows him about 45 minutes to grapple with and uh, stop the solar max from spinning, but I don't believe it's going to take him that long. Right? I guess it's going to take him about 25 minutes total time. He'll stop it from spinning, then Bob Crippen will bring the Challenger over at which time T.J. Hart will take that remote arm, grab a hold of the Solar Max, and then put it into the payload bay, at which time Ox will then start doing the repair work. Those are some spectacular pictures, aren't they? Certainly are. It looks like he's about halfway. He only has to go of roughly 200 feet from the spacecraft to reach the satellite. That's correct, about 200 feet. And we're going to have some problems with the lighting because they waited until the sun came right over the horizon to give themselves one full day, one orbital day, which is about 45 minutes long. And the uh, shuttle is now uh, over Hawaii, that area, and it's 33rd orbit. This satellite that's uh, being retrieved by the astronauts was launched in 1980 on Valentine's Day. Functioned for about 10 months and then something went wrong. Well, they know what went wrong, don't they? We pretty well know what went wrong, although we'll do some more post-mortem work on it when we get those parts back. Uh, looks like a couple of fuses, hermetically sealed fuses, leaked their little atmosphere into the uh, essentially vacuum of space and then lost their capability for cooling at that point and they literally burned out the fuses. And so, the net uh, result was they lost the attitude control unit. So that the, Right, uh, those were on uh, three of the gyros, three of the four gyro packages. There's also what we call a mag torquer on this that you can uh, line basically electromagnets up with the magnetic poles of the Earth and get some more torquing out of it. But uh, when they had three of the four gyros shut down, at that point they decided that they'd better put the solar max into a very slow spin to give it some stability. And uh, that allowed at least three of the seven experiments on board to keep functioning, although it's somewhat of a decreased capability. Which brings us to uh, what we're watching now, and that of course... Uh, take a little bit closer look now at that satellite which we've been calling solar max for solar maximum mission and our colleague jules bergman uh is standing by with this report jules noon the actual satellite is about the size of a station wagon lengthwise from here to here and weighs about the same each of these solar periodically you can hear voices in the background that's uh the crew on board telling uh thinking exactly where he is and just how far away from the satellite he is. There you see the satellite in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. The astronaut in the lower right. Some dis distortion of the picture, and we will be uh, getting back to those pictures, I'm certain. It's uh, an extra Thank you. This is a picture now, of course, of Mission oh, Control. A lot of folks here in Houston very happy watching the real TV pictures coming down, and here they are again. You can actually see the slow rotation of the satellite if we watch it very closely, and when Pinky gets there, he's going to have to effectively rotate with that satellite just prior to, uh, to docking with a, uh, a, a fitting that's on a satellite that was prepared, coincidentally enough, in case something like this should happen. And he is, a uh, story must be you have flown the uh, MMU simulator, the backpack simulator, or I did it myself. The, it's really a straight shot for him at this moment, right? This, this is not so difficult just getting over there. With all the training and the high fidelity simulations he had, Pink is very confident that he's going to be able to do it. And 
the, we had the numbers before on what the rotation rates would look like. Looking at it for real, it looks even slower than I would have expected. Than, the actual, than what you did in the simulation? No, I'm talking about subjective sensation of the numbers versus looking at it. How it really feels. It looks more reasonable now. <laughs> it, it's really rotating pretty slowly at, at one complete revolution in every six minutes. Well, as Jules pointed out, that um, the whole solar max satellite is around the size of a station wagon. Yeah, but uh, it weighs two and a half tons, and of course in space it doesn't weigh much, but uh, it has, you know, what we call inertia or mass. So Looks like George has come to a stop, just waiting to, for the proper phasing on going in between the solar sails. You probably want to go to your left a little bit. Uh, All right, who's giving him directions to move to his left a little bit? Sounds like Crip. Uh -huh. Again, this is uh, George Nelson on the right in that uh, jet-powered backpack approaching the SolarMax satellite. This is some pretty spectacular live coverage. If you look very carefully, we can see the satellite rotating, and it's rotating at uh, one revolution every, what was it, six minutes? One complete revolution every six minutes or a degree a second. And Pinky has to match that. Pinky has to match that. Uh, that is not a particularly difficult maneuver. On some of the simulators it is, but when you're in a mechanical simulator where you can get to your depth perception, it's, it's not a particularly difficult maneuver. Uh, we're capable of doing that up to about five RPM, or our, our revolutions per second, rather degrees per second. Again, listening to uh, Capcom or Mission Control in Houston this morning, we understand the, the, uh, the whole flight is, again, just simply going flawlessly. It really is. Uh, everybody is delightfully pleased and is a little bit surprised when things go quite that well. Maybe it's Bob Crippen's luck. He's, uh, he's certainly got a beautiful flight going so far. Now, how much time uh, and the timeline have they allowed for Nelson to make his rendezvous with this satellite? They've given him a total of 45 minutes for him to stay on schedule. But it, it really has never taken him that long. It's just we need to have choreography down where we don't get too far behind the timeline. Right now, they're into the second hour of the EVA. The EVA, I believe, uh, that is extravehicular activity, began at uh, 9.23 Eastern time this morning. That's true. And he's now been out, uh, left the cargo bay just about uh, quarter after the hour. So he's been out there almost 15 minutes on right, his way. Away from it. So he's doing well if he's got 40 minutes to reach that spacecraft. Yeah. Well, with these suits that we've got, uh, we can stay EVA or outside the aircraft for six hours very easily, and we can extend that up to 10, up to 10 hours if we need to, mm -hmm. uh, just being a little bit more careful and recharging oxygen. Yep. One reason he had to go out about an hour ahead of time is he had to don his man maneuvering unit and give it a checkout. We're not allowed to go untethered even in that man maneuvering unit until we have checked it out and know that it's in good shape. What, what is that we're looking at? That, looks that like is, uh, those there. are the two star trackers on the side. The left-hand side of that is the, sol that the whole thing is a solar max. Mm -hmm. What we're coming up to now, and this might be Pinky's, uh, this got to be Pinky's helmet TV. Right, right. This is from the And that the is the module now. they're going to change out with these uh -huh. two, looks like cannons coming at us now, but those are star trackers. In fact, let's, let's listen to ground. Hey, I'm blowing some caps on us, guys. A little bit. I think he just repeated what you told us. That's the, the view from the uh, television camera mounted in the helmet of George Nelson. That's super visible. Looks like he's just about stopped himself relative to Solar Max now. Uh huh. It's, it looks like he's moving on in. This, of course, is uh, man's first ever rendezvous with a free flying mm -hmm. rendezvous with a. Uh, there's, the, there's the trunnion oh, pin. Don't isn't lose it? this oh. video now. <laughs> Well, I know that those helmet uh, televisions give them quite a bit of trouble right. uh, on, on their links. He's right where he should be, right in between those uh, solar panels. Now, he's, he's doing a It looks like he's, uh, he's actually making the link up right now. Right with it. Of course, he's practiced this uh, on Earth in a simulator hundreds of times. Th that is definitely true. Uh, we go to Denver to fly actual mechanical type things with hydraulic uh, lifts on them. We work in water tanks. We also have uh, visual simulators at uh, Johnson Space Center as well. So we have many, many mediums for practicing these type of maneuvers. Well, we haven't heard acknowledgement, but it certainly appears as if George Nelson mm -hmm. has linked up successfully with the uh, SolarMax satellite. Looks like he's right there. He's probably concentrating pretty hard and not 
wanting to babble too much on the air. Okay, I saw some jiggling in there. It may have been him just starting to tie on that end effector. The end effector being? Well, it's really the Trunnion pin attached device, a right. T-pad, but uh, it's got a little end effector on it, really. Uh, some jaws that go out and grip grip a little post that's sticking out, and that post is hollow and threaded on the inside, so after he gets what we call a soft dock, he will then thread a, basically a bolt right through the center of that uh, rod that he's going to hold on to, and then run down two little legs to give himself a three-point stand on it. Then he'll start using the uh, the jets on the back uh, backpack to stop the rotation. That's true. Of Solar Max. <laughs> now that's not Solar Max rotating. That's yeah, a we're camera. We're slewing our camera on the right. payload bay. So again, you're looking at at the right-hand side of Solar Max, <laughs> Dr. George Nelson, who appears to have successfully made the rendezvous and has latched on to Solar Max. His uh, next order of business is to stop it from rotating relative to the spacecraft so that they can, uh, Crippen, Commander Crippen can bring the space shuttle over to uh, the satellite and bring it on board into that cargo bay. True. By the way, the point you were looking at right now is the point that has been pointing, aiming at the sun for mm -hmm. the last uh, few years. So really, when we say it's a crippled satellite, it's not entirely crippled. It still has been performing some of the experiments on board. That's true, uh, but in a much degraded mode. Again, three out of seven have been working. Well, this satellite was, was launched uh, in 80 uh, to study solar flares, uh, the sun's atmosphere, the corona. Really to try to increase our knowledge in, in almost all aspects of the sun. We want to get this working again, too, because uh, in 86, we've got a solar polar mission going up, which will be flying two satellites around the sun's pole. In fact, that's the phasing, or that is what is causing or driving our getting our second launch pad at uh, the Kennedy Space Center ready for that, uh, that launch. It'll require launching two shuttles within a week of each other. That's a beautiful picture. Right? That is spectacular. Let's listen. That sounds like the voice of Dick Scobie, the pilot for this particular mission. Now you're seeing come into view as the uh, satellite rotates. Pinky Nelson on the back side of the uh, satellite. These uh, two solar uh, panels, the rays on the uh, right and left side of the satellite, what's their function? Is that to provide the electrical power? That's correct. Those are what generates the electricity that the solar max uh, uses. Mm -hmm. How long will it take uh, for Nelson to stabilize that uh, satellite? I think the jet firings will probably take uh, about three minutes to slow him down, mm -hmm. but it may not be that long. Does he have to get it in any particular attitude or position in order for the arm, the remote arm on the cargo bay, to uh, successfully grapple this thing and bring it aboard? Well, the arm does have to come into the <clears throat> to its own docking point on that satellite, mm -hmm. but I don't think George will be the one to, to maneuver it around. It's easier to, at that point, to maneuver the orbiter. Now, this was uh, this satellite was launched with a grapple fixture, and it was uh, literally one of the first satellites or the first generation of satellites to be built and designed for space rendezvous and to come and be repaired in orbit. It, uh, that will be the type of satellites I think that we'll be launching in the near future. It's uh, almost ironic that this one did require that much repair, but we had always intended to rendezvous with this and bring it back. Okay, do you want to reattempt it again, or do you want to come on back again? Can you make out what they're... No, I can't. Part of that conversation said, uh, do you want to attempt it again or come back in? As I heard that, I don't like the way it sounds, but I'm not sure exactly what's going on. How you doing? The earlier Ox had mentioned having some problems with his submarine. One more try was the last... I had, uh, 1500 per That's the Solar Max uh, satellite, the top left-hand portion of your screen. Uh, astronaut George Nelson is right next to the satellite. We still have not determined absolutely whether he's made uh, the link-up. 
Well, now he is moving away, it appears, doesn't it? Certainly appears as though he has. <coughs> yes, he's definitely backing off from it. He may not have gotten a good dock. Again, George isn't saying a whole bunch, so we can only speculate as to why he did not make a good dock at this point. It might be that the, the physical dimensions are slightly different or we're not able to get in close enough. You just see the Earth's horizon. Uh, got rotation about to your left now, and uh, we're going to, we really need to stop that to do a rotating grapple. Uh, is there any way that you think you can do it with your hand if you can't get a grab hold of it? Yeah. It sounds like he would attempt to stop the rotation of the satellite with his hand. Looks like he will. They're rather concerned. Now, the backup here, explain this, Woody. What is the backup if, if uh, Dr. Nelson is unsuccessful in the... Uh, making the rendezvous and stopping rotation. If, yeah, that, what, what we just saw was uh, the trunnion pin that uh, George Nelson is attempting to make his dock with. Mm -hmm. The backup for the man doing the rendezvous and stopping the rotation is to let the arm do it. So it, it still, still may be possible to bring that aboard the, the okay. space shuttle. Uh, oh, definitely. Uh, I think okay, well, what Dick Scobie was saying, that, that we need to have it slow down a little bit more. We can clearly see that the uh, Solar Max satellite is still rotating relative to the spacecraft. That's a fact. <laughs> or the shuttle. This would appear to be a camera from the cargo bay. Isn't that one of the rollers? That's right. That's one of the, the roller top. locking mechanisms on the payload bay door. Well, Pinky is obviously backed off. It's hard to say, because I'm not sure what they're doing with the okay, camera that we're looking from. I don't think they've got a tumble started. Pardon? Yeah, you should just walk on out to the end of that array. Walk out to the end of that array. <clears throat> he may be going to go out to the end of the solar array. Which would story. give him a mechanical advantage, wouldn't it? Uh, sure, the farther good... away he can be. In fact, he's gra he, he is no, grasping He'd have a good it. lever arm at that point. Right. You can see his arm reaching out to uh, grasp that solar array panel. Dr. No. Nelson, who is uh, in, to us anyway, an upside down position. Oh. Somewhere like that. That'd be fine. Okay. Is that Scobie? That's, that's, that's Scobie's Talking voice. To him. Mm -hmm. Now, we obviously have moved the orbiter over underneath the solar max at this point because we're looking straight up at him now, and that's the high gain antenna that has never been deployed. That's in its stow position still. So Dr. Nelson uh, manually attempting to slow the rotation of this uh, Solar Max satellite. Well, and we're only we're only getting about eight pounds of thrust uh, through his four jets that fire on his man maneuvering unit. Four jets for any one time. So uh, that's that's the maximum amount of force he has to transmit. It's looking pretty good as far as pitch is concerned. Tell me when it's stable and it's looking good as far as pitch uh -huh. is concerned. So, which would indicate that he does have s stability at long at least one axis. Nelson attempting to manually stabilize Solar Max by grabbing the end of the solar array panel. Apparently, the uh, trunnion pin adapter did not latch properly. And, of course, the decisions have to be made rather quickly because you only have so much time you can oh, spend that's, out there. That's, that's true. Well, this mission has been going so absolutely perfectly so far that I'm, I'm certainly not surprised that something is starting to go wrong. Can you walk toward the, uh, the middle of that array uh, that you're holding on to to your left? Yeah. Again, that's uh, Commander uh, Pilot Scobie giving Sounds instructions like to Dick Scobie now. saying, can you walk to the middle of that solar yeah. array? Got a cycle there with power first. Shuttle Challenger should be uh, over the western part of the United States at this point, or approaching the west coast of the United States. <coughs> I think we're looking from the uh, television helmet again. I can see a good close-up of uh, his hand. No, we're back on the orbit now. Grab hold of it again and just go in that hole, yep. Grab hold of it again and just go in that hole, yep. Okay, 
grab a hold, go into that hold again. Coming into view is again the solar max. Okay, uh, Dick, do you think you'd be doing a better job if you went in and grabbed hold of the end effector? Grapple fixture. I think he's read us. Yeah, I do. Uh, okay, okay think about it, Trip. I don't know if I'm going to have enough gas to do that. Oh, what you got left? What you got left? We got uh, 1200 on one side and yeah, 1200 on both sides. Okay, come on back in, thanks. So, he's he's, well, he's run low on the... Uh, well, Pinky has uh, started off at about 3,000 pounds on each side. Now he's down to 1,200, so he's used up about half of his gas, uh, the nitrogen gas that's on board. It provides his jet thrust. He's now receiving vectors from uh, Dick Scobie on the orbiter, uh, telling him to come on back into the payload bay. Apparently, we will attempt to grapple with the remote with the arm. arm. Now, there's a second man maneuvering unit, and we also have a spare EVA suit as well. So if for some reason we have major problems and can't make it on this pass, we would still wait later on and maybe even tomorrow or the day after go do it all in one day. Roger, Crip. Uh, just wondering if you'd like the station keep for another rev, try the other MMU, or the same one recharged with the primary T-pad. we have to get that other thing settled down. We'll talk to you about that in a minute. All right. Okay, that was Capcom and suggesting exactly what you just told us, to use the other man maneuvering pad. Well, it, it, it's being offered as an option. Can you drive? What we used on this one was a secondary T-pad. Uh, at one time, uh, about a year and a half ago, we thought that we were going to have to install our own trunnion pin to uh, do a dock with, and that was the primary T-pad. Now, what we've done is we've taken that off our little T-pad adapter in the trunnion pit adapter assembly. To Let's listen uh, to the communication because Dr. Nelson is coming back to the uh, space shuttle and he is get being given directions or vectors by uh, one of the astronauts aboard the shuttle, is that correct? Well, he started flying over to the <laughs> orbiter backwards where he didn't have the visibility, so Dick was just telling him to put the thrust in as required to get where he needed to be. So anyway, one of the options that we do have is to go pick up the primary T-pad and uh, do another rendezvous, another dock. Uh, meanwhile, George can go recharge and put in a more nitrogen in his man maneuvering unit, or he can... A good athlete, so he's got the strength in his arms that he'll need to do it. Yes, I'm oh, sure. Well, and obviously, he, he had the capability of doing that. And he knew what to do if but he it, had But it's to. critical to this mission that the satellite not resist being picked up by a man maneuvering unit or by the arm itself. Just uh, Although it took some time to get the fingertip control necessary for a really smooth ride. The left-hand control makes you go forward and back, up and down, and left or right. And it can rotate in three different ways. It can pitch forward and back. It can yaw. I think, Bob, I want to check this with you. The mechanism on the arm of the spaceship Challenger will be able to make that hard dock if Pinky can bulldog that thing and get it down to the right spin speed, i.e. no motion. Uh, we can expect... The pin that's called a soft dock, and then by a motor driven lad... ...to be, but isn't, because of the failure this morning of Dr. George Nelson to make a hard dock with the uh, crippled satellite, and uh, he has returned to the spacecraft, he and uh, Dr. James Van Hoften, both uh, in their spacewalk. Airlock and the, uh, coming up at this time, outer hatch closed. Outer hatch closed, mm -hmm. so they're back inside. That means they're inside, they're just closing the outer hatch, and then they'll go ahead and repress or repressurize the airlock. There's the docking ring, is that right? That's where the satellite should be held. That's correct. Now, the, uh, the space shuttle Challenger is yeah, moving away two, from the crippled MD satellite Solar Max to station, to station keep at about eight Solar miles Max above satellite. Uh, the uh, satellite overnight while the crew at goes and enters its sleep period. Then tomorrow, they will again attempt to retrieve, to capture that satellite with the remote arm. 
Where, would, where would, the, would the remote arm? We can't see it right now, can we? It's stowed. No, it's uh, no, it's not stowed. Oh. As a matter of fact, uh, the the little Y device just to the far right, as we look at it, of that uh, flight support structure would be one of the cradles for the arm. So it's uh, it's obviously extended and being used to some if, uh, t for some reason. They are going to, I believe, uh, watch a water dump later, and they're probably going to use one of the remote arm cameras to focus on the uh, dump port. We should point out that after Dr. Nelson uh, attempted unsuccessfully to rendezvous and capture and stabilize that satellite, that the crew aboard uh, Challenger did attempt to uh, uh, grapple the satellite with the remote arm, and that apparently also was unsuccessful. The satellite, what's its attitude right now, Woody? Is it uh, tumbling in space? It's not, not tumbling, per se. Uh, it, it does have some pitch oscillation now, as well as the rotation around its own y-axis or yaw axis, and uh, there always was a little bit of precession, about a 15-degree coning angle as well. So we've just got a little bit more rates than we had when we started off with, and we'll use those mag torquers to slow it down to the maximum amount feasible without letting it go into a complete tumble. The mag torquers, these are devices on the satellite that will restabilize it in space? They are the uh, remaining operational part that is in that uh, attitude control module. The four gyroscopes, three of which failed, and the fourth one which was turned off after the fuses failed for us. We talked a little earlier about the fuel situation aboard at Challenger. Apparently, uh, they've reached a red line situation that is uh, Solar Max out there. It's uh, it, the sun reflecting off of it, so we can't see the details on it, but that is mm -hmm. Solar Max. In any event, the uh, fuel situation is such that we understand they will not uh, use that jet powered backpack again. True. Uh, as, as we mentioned before, that the uh, jet pack has two redundant systems for its own safety. The third system, and we require three for any, any man going out, uh, the orbiter provides the third system, and if we are low on forward propellant, then we would be unable to safely pick them up if we had to and still have enough fuel left to complete our mission. So that's a pre-mission to find red line, if you will, and that's where we are now. Again, we're looking at the uh, cargo bay to the uh, aft end of Challenger. That's the uh, tail you can see behind the cargo bay. And this is where, if they are successful tomorrow with the remote manipulator arm in capturing and grappling the uh, satellite solar max, this is where it will be placed. And take us through the uh, chain of events, Woody, once they get that. By the way, what, what is your guess, and I'm asking you to make a guess, I suppose, on the chances of successfully retrieving that satellite with the arm? I still think we've got uh, an excellent chance of retrieving that satellite. It's been done many times, but then again, so had the dock. Uh, and it, I'd, and it was I'd say we're probably at about a 95% chance of, of, of successfully doing this mission. Also on the satellite repair, uh, we can really do the repairs that will keep everybody almost as happy as they could be. Uh, in close-up picture of the trunnion pin attached device. Uh, you can see it's about an inch and a half in diameter. It's about six inches long. And this is what Dr. George Nelson was tending to grapple with. I'm going to stick my hand in front of it. Yes. He had to come in with his little, little cone there and insert it over the top of this device. Uh, you probably can't see on your televisions, but that is threaded on the inside. To, once he got his little canister over the top of that, he would fire three jaws, similar to a standard drill chuck, except they're spring-loaded. Mm -hmm. That would be what's called a soft dock. Mm -hmm. We would then thread uh, another rod that would come through to the inside of that, and uh, that would be the hard dock. He would then put down two little foot pads that would touch the sides of the, uh, the satellite, and that would be a three-point stance on it and a good hard dock and then make him capable of doing anything he had to do. And apparently this is, of course, then what did fail this morning, the inability to make that, that hard dock on that. And again, we ought to remind uh, everyone that uh, things are back to near null aboard uh, Challenger. Now, are we back down in mid-deck? Well, we're in the mid-deck. I see we've got the airlock door open. We're facing forward or kind of forward. And is that Terry Hart in the background? That is Terry Hart. He's standing in front of the galley area. He's got uh, cooking duties today. Huh? This is George Nelson. Uh, Pinky is really uh, likes to fly around that spacecraft. Every time we see him, we seem to see him doing somersaults or moving very rapidly from one position to the other. I noticed that. that we used to change the film out for IMAX, and I've just completed moving a thousand feet of film from the can into the magazine. And uh, it's not a particularly easy job on the ground because the magazine is heavy enough that, that you have trouble supporting it. But you can see you with uh, the weightlessness here, it's a piece of cake. You can also even take time out and have a little sip for... Uh 
Terry Hart describing changing the film magazine. 15 second dark room. <laughs> so we've been watching the astronauts aboard Challenger uh, performing their.